Hi everybody, my name is Tori Earl and I'm an Extension Specialist for 4-H Youth Development with the University of Kentucky's College of Agriculture, Food and Environment Cooperative Extension Service. We're here today to introduce you to this year's 4-H National STEM Challenge, which is called Mars Base Camp. If you hadn't noticed, this year we're doing the National 4-H STEM Challenge training just a little differently. This fourth segment is on the Mars Base Camp Insight from Mars activity from the 4-H STEM Challenge. In our fourth activity from the Mars Base Camp Challenge, we are going to look at Insight from Mars. This is where we are sending back information from Mars to people on Earth on what we've discovered. And in doing this, we're going to use Scratch, which is a block-based coding program, to develop our own unique message to send back to Earth. Um, in doing this, youth will become familiar with the Scratch block-based program language, coding language, learn more about computer science concepts and sequencing and logical thinking, and be able to have a fun and creative uh, project to develop in Scratch. In doing this, you will need a computer and internet access for it, so this is not uh, necessarily one that everyone may do, but it's, it's a fun one for uh, youth to do if they're interested in computer science. The facilitator guide, which the activity itself starts on page 30, and um, the activity page, which is available at 4-h.org slash insight from Mars. Other things that you will need that are in the kit are the Scratch coding cards and the computers with Scratch installed if you are not able to do, it, to do it in an online version. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like on the screen itself. For the Mars Base Camp Insight from Mars, we're going to start right here at the 4-h.org 4-h STEM Challenge webpage. And to get to Insight from Mars, we will scroll down to the center of the page and we'll click on Get Started. That is going to take us to the Insight from Mars web page. And as you scroll down through here, you can see it gives you some information about Insight from Mars. It also gives you a chance to see a video from some 4-H'ers as well as from one of the Google employees who helped develop this. And the middle section here is where we will get started with the Insight from Mars Scratch activity. But before we do that, we'll scroll on down and you can see that you can download the coding challenges both in English and in Spanish. Uh, these are the same coding challenge cards that are in your kit. And if you got the educator kit that are on the USB drive that came with it. But you can download these and utilize them. Or you can utilize the scratch coding cards that are in your kit. But to get started with the scratch coding itself, we'll go to this center section and click on start coding and that will bring us up to the scratch website and it will look like this that will be the 2020 4-h stem challenge insight from mars and if you're wanting to do this uh, with youth and have them share their different uh, scratch coding activities that they've created uh, they will have to create a scratch account and you can do that by going Right up here, it will be, if, the, if you're not already logged in, it will have you log in. And if you don't have an account, you can create one. But in order to share their activities, what they will have to do is they will have to click Remix. And Remix is basically the save and be able to share function with Scratch. But to start the activity itself, you're going to click on See Inside. And that will take you to the Scratch programming window. Now over here on the right hand side of the screen is the stage. 
The stage uh, is where you will be able to see what's going to be on the screen. And as you notice here, it's already got some created. In the stage, you can change backdrops, which will be over here on the right hand side. You can, where it looks, you said you can choose a backdrop. Uh, in the center of the screen, the white area is actually your coding screen. Uh, you'll be able to move the different uh, coding blocks over to make different things happen on the stage over here. Now the Mars rover that they have here in the center of the stage is called a sprite. There are many different sprites in Scratch that you can choose from. And as we get started with our activities, uh, I'll show you some of the different sprites that are used and then give you a chance to uh, play around with that and create your own. But we will go through three or four of the Scratch Coding Challenge cards just to show you what it looks like to, uh, to be involved with. Again, the center here is your, your coding screen. That's where you're going to put all your code in. And these blocks on the left-hand side are the code blocks for Scratch. If you'll notice, they are in different colors. The ones in blue have to do with motion, making your sprites move around the screen. The ones in purple have to do with looks or, act, or things that the sprites will do. Um, it may be a bubble that comes up and has them say something. The Down here you can actually switch costumes, which we'll talk about that in a few minutes. You can switch backdrops, so if you have a different backdrop you want to appear, you can switch that there. Uh, you can change the size of your sprites. You can change the color of your sprites. So there are all different things that you can do to your sprites as far as the look goes. The next section in the pink is sound. You can add sounds to your sprites uh, and some of the challenge cards will have that um, listed that you can do. In the yellow are events. The events are if-then statements. Uh, for example, uh, when the green flag is clicked. So you could also say if the green flag is clicked then something else happens. And we'll, I'll show you that with a couple of the sprites in just a second. Orange are controls. Controls can tell your sprite to wait a certain amount of time for it before it does something, to repeat something a certain number of times, and we'll get into those as well. Sensing, we're not going to get into as much. It's uh, one of those things that you can play with a little bit. Uh, for example, if something is touching the mouse pointer, then you can make, uh, make a different action happen. Operators, we're not going to get into those as much with, uh, with this activity either, but just keep in mind that it's, it's something that you can do. Uh, you can do an arithmetic action and cause another action to happen. Variables, we're not going to use those as much either in this one, but uh, you can use those to make certain things happen. And then you can actually create your own blocks in this. So we're going to go back up here to motion. Uh, two other tabs that are up here are costumes. Uh, you'll see that when we click on costumes, the sprite that we have highlighted comes up, and you can actually change the costume. And basically in changing a costume, all you're doing is making the sprite move something that's on the sprite itself or change the image that the sprite has. For example, if I go from costume 1 on the rover to costume 2 on the rover, you'll notice that the arm moves up. And if you look over here on the stage, the arm moves up. I go to costume 3, the arm moves down. And you can see that on the stage that the arm moves down. But we're going to move back to costume one and then sounds at this point we don't have any sounds loaded but down here at the bottom you can click on choose a sound and it will give you all the different sounds that are available we're not going to add sounds at this point but we'll click on back which is the, at the upper left 
and we'll go back to our code. Now our first scratch coding challenge card and they are numbered in your kit is called continue the conversation and in this scratch coding challenge card we are going to add two sprites to our stage and then we're going to have those sprites interact with each other in a conversation. To add our sprites I'm going to go down to the bottom right hand corner of my screen not the backdrop but where it said where you hover over it and it says choose a sprite. I'll click on that it's a little cat and the two sprites that they use in the example are Ben and if you see while I hover over Ben he's got three different three or four different costumes that he has you can tell that because he's in motion so I'm going to choose Ben that's going to put him down here in this little sprite screen and it's also going to put him up here on the stage from there I can click on Ben and I can drag him around to different places so I'm going to stand him right up here on this ledge and then if I go over to costumes and Ben is highlighted every time that I would click on a different costume for Ben he's going to change positions so we'll leave it on costume one for right now and then I'm going to choose another sprite because if we're going to have them have a conversation we need more than one. The second one that they use in the example is Goblin. I click on Goblin. Goblin appears over here on the stage and I'm going to stand Goblin on this ledge over here. Same with Ben. I can go to Goblin and I can change costumes. Got a happy face. Got Goblin waving. I've got a sad face and something that looks like Goblin may be a little upset. So I'm going to go back to Goblin's first costume and then over here to our code. Now, in Continue the Conversation, if you look on the back of your coding card, it gives you the code to put in to have them have a conversation. We'll go through this step by step and then you might get a chance to work on this on your own as we um, finish up a little bit. So the first person that we're going to have interact or have a conversation is Ben. So I'm going to put, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on Ben's sprite icon and I'm going to have Ben actually answering Goblin. So we're going to look at our continue the conversation coding card and we're going to go to the bottom half of it. So the first thing that we're going to look for is an event. That's going to get everything started. So our event according to our coding challenge card is when the green flag is clicked. So all I will do is I'll go over here click and hold on the event when the green flag is clicked and I will drag it over to the coding window. The second thing at the bottom is a control. Now I can get to my controls right below the events and I drag this over. It's our weight control and if I don't get it connected to my event it won't do anything. So I have to make sure and you'll see a little shadow up here there that I connect it to the event and on the coding challenge card it has you to change that uh, variable in there to wait four seconds wait one second is the default on it then we're gonna have Ben say something not a sound but a look so we're gonna go to our looks menu and you'll see the first block up here is say it uh, indicates that he's going to say hello for two seconds. Now, I'm going to go drag this over, make sure it's connected, and instead of having him say hello for two seconds, we're going to have him say, I don't know, with an exclamation mark. Okay, that's all Ben is going to say. 
So when I click either on this green flag or on the green flag to start, if you watch the stage, Ben, it's waiting four seconds, and Ben is going to say, I don't know. All right. But in order for that to make sense, Ben's going to have to interact with Goblin. So then I click on Goblin's sprite. And we want this to start when the green flag is clicked. That's going to be our trigger for all of our events. So I drag when the green flag is clicked over to my coding window. I want Goblin to wait for two seconds before anything happens. Now, I had Ben wait for four seconds. Why did I do that? Because after Goblin waits for two seconds, Goblin is going to say, what is this doing here with a question mark and Goblin is going to say that for two seconds so two seconds and two seconds is four seconds Ben doesn't say anything for four seconds so when my green flag is clicked 1001 1002 what is this doing here I don't know so to have the conversation, you're going to have to work out timing as well. So Goblin waits for a couple of seconds and then says, what is this doing here for two seconds? Ben waits for four seconds before he says anything. So that is, is how a conversation would work. You listen to what one person says and then you respond to it. So now we're actually going to have Goblin wait for another two seconds and Goblin is going to say something else. Goblin is going to say it looks scary with an exclamation point. Now when I click on my green flag we wait two seconds. Goblin asks a question Ben responds, Goblin responds again. And that is our first coding program. Our second coding challenge card is called Animate a Story Title. And in this one, you're actually going to create a sprite yourself to paint and to provide a title for your insight from Mars that you are sending back to Earth. So the first thing we're going to go down here and do is we're going to click on choose a sprite and we're going to choose on paint and that will bring up a blank sprite field here in the middle for us to create a costume or a sprite. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a rectangle and I am just going to draw a rectangle by clicking and dragging from one corner to the other and you notice that it then appears on my stage over here. Um, we can change the color of this uh, to uh, different colors. Uh, I think instead of doing purple to blue, I'm going to do green to blue or swap that and I can do blue down to green. And all I did was click on fill and bring that over here to this. So it appears at the top of my stage. Then I'm going to add some text to it. And you can see that there's all different types of texts that you can add um, to kind of look like what is on the challenge card itself. I'm going to use marker and I just click inside my sprite here that I created and I'm going to type Oh, I look at that and I can't see anything on it. So what I want to do is I want to change the color to a darker color that I can see. And I will type insight from Mars. And if you'll notice, it comes up over here in my stage as well. So click on that and then I can actually make 
this bigger by dragging and changing the size of the box that it is in. So now I have Insight from Mars. Uh, it is my title on there and I can maneuver that around a little bit and oop, here, maneuver it around just a little bit. If I can get a hold of it, drag from the center and get it kind of centered up in my screen. All right, and then on the challenge card itself, they add a little decoration to it. So I'm gonna try my artistic ability here. I'm gonna go over here and grab a line and click and draw, click and draw, draw and then release and then get from another point, click draw and release, click draw and release. Just keep going like that. And I'm going to connect these two. And not exactly the best in the world, but I will click on, after that, I'll go up here and click on my arrow. I'll go over here to fill, change my color a little bit. Uh, let's go with a reddish orange. And I'm going to go to, down here to the little paint fill and click on it. And you notice that I can hover over anything and it changes. It'll change the um, font, it'll change the box that I first created, or it'll change the little thing that I drew up here. So after you're satisfied with it, um, go back here and click on your arrow and I can actually move this down a little bit. If I grab it from the center, if I grab this one from the center, and if I grab this one from the center, I can move them all. And you see it changes the spacing on the stage itself. So I have created a new sprite, a new costume. And you notice it shows up over here in my sprite window. So in order to make it do something, I have to first go to an event. So when the flag is clicked, and according to the coding challenge card, I want to go to looks again and I want to scroll down until I find the set effect which is right here and then I'm going to drop down and I'm going to change it to ghost and it sets the ghost effect to zero. Now, when we click on that, we can see what the ghost effect is. Not much right now. But if we want it to do something different, we'll go to our controls. And we'll have it repeat changing something. So this is going to be our base. The ghost effect is set to zero. I'm going to go back to looks. And instead of set, we're going to change the ghost effect. by two that's what it indicates on the card so we'll change that by two and then what it's actually having you do now is go to a control uh, excuse me event and when you get to the end of this repeat that it does for 10 times you're going to broadcast a message now we'll have to create a message for it to broadcast so let's create a message the end and click on that so let's go click on our green flag and see what happens It just does a slight change in it. So we can change this to, let's say, 10 and see what happens. Makes it completely disappear. So what about 5? 
just kind of fades it out. So if we wanted it to completely fade out, we would probably go to uh, 10 or better. But our card indicates changing it to 2. And it just causes it to fade a little bit. Then it broadcasts the message, the end. Let's go back and see what it broadcasting that message, the end, would change on something. When we look at what we've got right now on our stage, we have our Insight from Mars title that we just created with Animate a Story title. And we still have Goblin and we have Ben on the screen, on the stage. We did find out that if the ghost effect was changed by two, that this would stay on the screen. But say we wanted to get rid of it. We found out that if we change this to 10, when we clicked on the flag, it would make it go away. So, and then we have this broadcast the end at after the title disappears. Let's see how this actually works. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here to Goblin and we're actually going to go back to our first um, coding that we did with Goblin. But instead of when the flag is clicked, we're going to put on here when I receive the message, the end, which is what we just created. Go back to our first card. We had Goblin wait two seconds. We had Goblin say, what is this doing? O-I-N-G. Here, question mark for two seconds. And then we had Goblin wait another two seconds. And we had Goblin say it looks scary. Then we had Ben when the flag was clicked start the conversation too but again instead of when the flag is clicked we're going to wait until we receive the broadcast of the end in order to start the conversation. We're going to go to our control. We had Ben wait for four seconds. And then we had Ben say, I don't know for two seconds. So now we have Ben with this code. We have Goblin with this code and we have our new sprite with this code. So when we start by clicking the green flag, there should be a series of events that happens. Let's see what it does. And then we stop and it reset, hit our stop sign and it resets. So when we click the green flag, our insight from Mars fades away then, when it broadcasts the end, it gets to the end of this part, it broadcasts the end, and starts into our next set of code. So that way you can have a sequence of things happen. When one ends, then another one starts. That's how the the end command, or the broadcast command and the receive command work. In order to see what happens with our third coding challenge card, which is code a color change, we're actually going to get rid of some of the things on our stage. And I want to show you how to do that now. Uh, you still see our code here from our sprite that we created. In order to get rid of individual lines of code, you would click on it, drag it back over to the code block storage area. But if you want to get rid of the whole thing, you grab it by the first action that it does, or first event that is triggered, and then you can drag it over to the 
coding block area. And if you notice, that's going to get rid of all of the code for Goblin. And then if we want to get rid of Goblin, we come over here to our sprite area and we click on the trash can that's at the upper right corner of that particular sprite. Same thing with our Insight from Mars. We're going to get rid of our code and we're going to get rid of our sprite. Make get rid of it. Go over here to Ben. Quicker way to do it, we can get rid of the sprite itself and it gets rid of the code at the same time. So now we're left with our Mars rover that is on the screen and we are going to create a multicolor effect for that particular sprite or that particular object. So we have chosen our sprite and first thing we do we put an event in when the flag is clicked according to our challenge card we go to our code and we wait one second and then it asks us to repeat for 50 times a look that we're going to change our color effect. And you see all the different things you can change here. You can change your color effect and they recommend by 20. So as I click the green flag let's see what happens to our rover. It repeated changing the color effect by 20 50 times and you can see it just makes it look like it's flashing. So that's a fun little activity or fun little thing that you can do and you could actually link it to a, uh, uh, a broadcast and a receive command. As you can see there are all kinds of things that you can do with Scratch in making your stage and your final presentation do various things be interactive with each of the sprites in the the chat or in the stage itself and at this time just play with it a little bit use the the coding cards or the coding challenge cards and try to create your own story of what you would be sending back from Mars as you go through the Insight from Mars activity, make sure to look at the reflection page on page 34 of your facilitator guide because each one of the activities that they do in Mars Base Camp can relate to the Insight from Mars. They can provide information about their landing zone card that they got. They can provide information about what it took to build their rover. And they can also provide information about what they learned about crops on Mars. So each one of those can go in this report that they're sending back to Earth from Mars.